Hello there, so today I'm going to be following a Bob Ross tutorial, but with a catch. I'm not going to be painting it with oils today, like Bob. I'm going to be doing it digitally. I've been wanting to paint a Bob Ross piece for probably about a year now, and I've just never gotten around to it, but it's kind of a trending thing now to follow Bob Ross tutorials, so I thought that I would just do it. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, and I'm going to be doing it with my snazzy new Chromebook. This is an ad for Chromebooks, and I was sent this Chromebook probably about one or two months ago now, and when I received it, I did not realise that it opens up, flips over, turns into a tablet that you can draw on. So it's basically a drawing tablet. And I thought it'd be the perfect excuse to make this video, so I hope you enjoy it. And I'd like to welcome you to this, our ninth Joy of Painting series. I'm going to take off today with a little bit of yellow ochre. A little yellow ochre. Okay. And into that, a touch of bright red. And all you need is just a small amount of the red. Just like so. Just sort of blend it out. Still about like that. This is too red. Just little crisscross strokes. Like so. There you go. Now maybe just the smallest amount of red. I want it to be a little bit brighter out here on the edges. We want this to be a, a very warm... The thing that I like about digital is you kind of do the same thing that you do with oil painting. You, you, well me in particular, I tend to start out with um, layers as in I start with a darker colour and then lighten it as I go. It's kind of the same concept with oil painting as well. Obviously, starting out light at the moment, but that's just because he's doing the sky. But um, yeah, I just I like to start out with dark colours. It's not as easy to blend digitally or as quick, at least, as it is with actual paints. But I'm excited to give this a decent go. Take the brush off. And... <laughs> that's the fun part of this technique. All right. I'm going to go right into Not the same. It and just begin working that right up to the color. There. Hmm. Oh, it's a pretty little sky already. A little more color. Just blue and black. Blue and black. And bring it right on around. So we have sort of a vignette. Okay. I have several of them here, so I don't have to wash them all the time. And right here where these two colors come together, I want to blend this so it's very soft and very gentle. Painting should make you happy. We stress that over and over. It really should make you happy. There you go. It should make you feel good. Yes, it should. I didn't sign up for finger painting today, Bob. The key to blending when you're digital painting is to keep reducing the flow or the opacities and then just going back and forth and using transition shades to finally blend out those colors. And you can do this several times to get any degree of lightness that you want. There. Nice, bright little sun. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think we'll put a happy little mountain in here. Right, okay. So I can't do that with this, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to create the shape myself. So uh, about here. it's a little bit too neat I think with stuff like nature it needs to be a little bit more rough like why he's using the knife I think that's a really good idea but I can't do that if you can see the entire mountain the top of the mountain is always more distinct than the bottom of the mountain so by pulling it down and allowing it to mix with the liquid white that happens automatically and to that I'm gonna add a touch wait I'm still not done with my mountain top okay so he's grabbed some white a little light plane there. Okay, so he's made a light plane through there. I'm just going to use a tiny little brush here to kind of give the jagged effect of a actual paintbrush. I get so many letters from painters all over the country saying my snow doesn't want to break. And by break, I mean it has all those little holes in it. How do you break digital paint? Just asking for a friend. But here, you just let it caress. Let oh, it wait, Bob, wait, Bob. Calm down, Bob. Calm down. I can't. I'm trying to hurry up and copy you, but I can't. I'm trying really hard, Bob, to caress the canvas here, but it's just not happening for me. This looks like poo. This is one of the simplest type of little mountains to make. 
what's the difficult type then? Because this is not simple. This is horrible. This is horrible. I just don't like doing this at all. I'm going to create some mist at the bottom of this mountain. So with a clean, dry, two inch brush. Bob, please stop with the mist because I can achieve the mist very easily on this. Please stop. That easy. We got a hefty little mountain. Okay. We'll have a little footy hill back here. Where are they? Painting gives you tremendous amounts of power on this canvas. And you have to use it. Make decisions. Okay. Now then. Right. Uh, this is tough without an actual fan brush. <laughs> I can't do this, Bob. I can't do this. Like so. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to lower the flow. I'm going to lighten this slightly. And I'm going to attempt to create that mist. This just looks like a massive blob of line. But his looks like a masterpiece. I think this is probably the issue with Bob Ross. He makes everything look easy and it's actually not. Maybe back in here there's some snow. Let's have some fun. He's so optimistic all the time. I just really admire that about him. I had a lady in class one time and she called these Z trees. Maybe that's a good analogy. Just think of making Z's. Well, you're just like Zorro in here. Z's. But his looks so and good. Mine look horrible. Trees in your world as you want. Bob's on his fifth happy tree and I'm still on my first one. Um, and it's not such a happy tree. It's quite droopy and sad looking. Maybe there's some trees that live far away. There's... Or maybe there's just, just one tree and not loads of them because Chloe can't draw them very well. There, there's a wonky little tree. There. He's drawn another tree. He's drawn another tree. Bob, why? Why Bob? Bob, Bob. Yours get more perfect as you go. Mine get worse. I think I'm getting the hang of it though. Like, this this tree looks a lot happier than the other ones do. Right, so now I've got to give the trees highlights. Um, so we'll do a bit of highlighting. And then we'll do a little bit of contour after. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I really, I really don't. I don't, if I ever do trees, which is never, uh, I don't do it this way. So this is a new experience for me. I mean, if I was to do this seriously, I would actually spend a lot longer trying to make it look better and fix it. But because I am trying to stick to somewhat of a time limit on this, it's kind of rushed. <laughs> over here, let's go right over on this side. Here's another little plane. So each one of these little hills you make creates a different plane in your painting and helps, it really helps create the illusion of depth. Bob wants to do a signature now, so let's see how he does it. Turn into a little bit of the liquid clear. Bring it to a nice sharp point. Let's sign it right here. I hope you've enjoyed this painting. It's a lot of fun. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. There we go. Done. There we go. That's it. That's what I did. It's not quite Bob standard, is it? But um, I did my best. <laughs> and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I just wanted to quickly talk about this amazing Chromebook that I was sent. This is actually the third Chromebook we have in my household because we all love Chromebooks in my house. Um, and what's so great about them, especially the newer models, is that the battery lasts up to 10 hours, which if you're someone that's a bit lazy, doesn't want to pick up the cord to plug it in, or you want to step all night long watching movies or shows, you can do that with this without even having to charge it. It's great for school because the files constantly save and they never get lost. You can also transfer files and things to your phone and different devices. They also turn on in seconds, which is really, really handy, especially if you're someone that's in a rush or traveling a lot. And for you artists out there, if you're someone that's looking to get into digital art, this is honestly the cheapest screen tablet option that I have ever come across. 
The Google Play Store is incredible because you have things like, I use the Adobe Sketch app, which is free. They have Adobe Illustrator, they have Lightroom, Spotify, they have thousands and thousands of apps on there. And it's just, you've got so many options. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this Chromebook, I will leave a link to it in the description below. And yeah, I really enjoyed myself making this video today. I really, really did. And I think next time I'm gonna try to do it with oils because I've never actually attempted that before. But it was a lot of fun challenging myself to try and recreate a piece that was made in oils into a digital piece because obviously it's very vastly different. So yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.